Hello, my name is Jane Shaw. I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for Material Science at the University of Oxford. Um, and this talk today is the second part of uh, two and um, looks at the application process to um, Material Science at Oxford. Um, essentially, how do you go about applying, how do you get in, what happens when you graduate and how you can find out more. So hopefully if you're listening to this, you are really interested in material science. If you want to find out a little bit more about material science and an overview of the course at Oxford, you should really listen to part one of this talk first. However, now that you're here, um, let's get on and let's um, explain how the application process works. So applying for material science at Oxford, it is essential that you are studying maths and physics to A-level or equivalent. Um, if you are um, able to study chemistry alongside that, that would be highly recommended. So if you're in the process of choosing your A-levels, then I would suggest that you choose maths, physics or chemistry, which will also allow um, options of many other physical sciences as well. If you are able to do a fourth A-level alongside those three, then we would consider further maths and design and technology helpful subjects for studying material science at Oxford. But do be careful you take into consideration that our typical offer is A star AA, and that's three A-levels. Um, so, you know, do not take on four A-levels to the detriment of um, achieving those high grades. There's also on this slide um, information regarding the IB, the Welsh Baccalaureate, and you can see the admissions website um, on the Oxford University web pages to get further information on other qualifications you may have. Um, alongside studying maths and physics at A-level, um, when you apply, you need to also register to do the physics aptitude test. And that is part of the application process. You must have completed the physics aptitude test. This is usually um, administered through your school or college. Um, and further details on that can be found by following the link at the end of this slide. Um, I suggest that you look at the sample papers and the mark schemes and have a go and time yourself with regards to carrying out the test. Okay, so that is also a requirement. So what are our tutors looking for? There, you will complete an application um, for Material Science at Oxford through UCAS. And um, when you submit that application, you have to fill in, um, uh, you provide us really with a lot of information. And we take that all into consideration. So we look at your whole application. We look at it in context to you. So um, within your personal statement, we would like to see a commitment to um, our subject, to material science. So what made you decide to apply for material science? Um, You've maybe read something, maybe you've um, seen something on television or you've listened to a podcast or, you know, there was something within your um, physics A-level that you explored further or perhaps you had the opportunity to do an EPQ or were lucky enough to um, attend a course at university um, as a, an outreach course related to material science. Whatever it is that has sparked your interest in material science, um, you know, you should demonstrate that commitment to the subject within your personal statement and the interest in the subject. Also, you know, to take on board, we're well aware that material science is um, a subject that isn't offered by a large number of universities, so it's not uncommon for um, applicants to be applying for um, different but related degrees elsewhere. Do make sure that you address um, your interest in material science um, as well as that other subject. And it may be that they have a crossover and that's why you're applying for them in the first place. But we need to see that clear interest in our subject within your personal statement. We would also look um, at your previous academic record. So we would like to see um, a large number of sevens, eights and nines across your GCSEs. You know, the odd uh, lower number, you know, five or six, um, isn't a big problem um, as long as it is not in the maths and sciences. So really in the maths and sciences in particular, it should be all sevens, eights and nines. Um, if you have AS results, we will look at those and we will look at your A2 predicted results. And they should be at least A star AA, with the A star predicted in maths, physics or chemistry. 
And of course, as I've already mentioned, you will need to have done the physics aptitude test and we will look at your results from that in the context of your whole application. Your school reference supports all of um, the information you are providing to us. And it's important with your school reference that you, um, a teacher you know is giving that reference um, and is um, demonstrating that you are a student that is capable of um, studying material science at um, the University of Oxford and backs up any um, maybe minor concerns within your application. Um, one quite common thing as material science isn't um, a well-known subject and in many cases students come across it when they're in year 12 and they've already taken their A-level options and they may not have chemistry. Um, which we would recommend that you do have. So if you don't have it, um, perhaps within your teacher's reference, they would be able to um, inform us that you're a competent um, student that um, is well able to um, study independently the chemistry alongside what you're doing. Um, and any other things that, you know, strengthen your application um, and make us aware of how good a potential student you are. So with all of those things taken into consideration, um, if you're um, showing a commitment to our subject, you're predicted the grades um, that we would like um, and your teacher's reference backs you up and you've performed well in your physics aptitude test, you are highly likely to be invited to interview. So what happens at interview? Right, so you would have applied to one course one college or um, you may have put in an open application in which um, case we would have um, allocated you to a college. So you will be interviewed by the college you applied to and one other college or in the case of an open application we will um, allocate the colleges for you. Um, what we're looking for in an interview, what tutors are looking for in an interview is a student that has the potential to gain a first class Masters in Engineering Material Science at the University of Oxford. So it's not a test that you're revising for. We would expect you to have a good scientific knowledge um, of the GCSE syllabus, um, most certainly. But we're looking at how quickly we can move you on. So you're highly likely to be asked questions you don't know the answers to. And it's being able to talk through those um, and, you know, learn together and move through quite quickly. And we can see how quickly you can grasp things and apply um, potentially new knowledge and understanding. Um, so one way um, I suggest that you can potentially prepare for an interview is by chatting with your friends about sort of problems that um, you're getting um, within your physics and chemistry teaching and your maths teaching or you know even at home um, talking your way through a maths problem and asking yourself questions outside that initial question that you may not know the answers to um, um, but with a friend you can maybe discuss what they may be um, so you're beginning to apply the knowledge and understanding you've got of those subjects um, so we're looking for independent thinking, we're looking for people who have, who have good problem solving skills and of course an interest and commitment to our subject. Um, at Oxford there are seven colleges that offer material science um, and they are listed here. Um, I suggest you look at their websites and you get a feel for which college um, you would be interested in applying to. You may have the opportunity to come and visit Oxford and if you have that chance, um, you could visit you know, a few of these colleges and um, you know, at the end of the day, it's a very personal choice which college um, you choose to apply to. Um, there's no game to play, however, you know, apply for the college that you feel is right for you. But take on board um, the last bullet point on this slide. Um, and with taking that on board, um, it's also worth noting in the many years I've worked for Oxford Material Science, Science I am yet to meet an undergraduate who does not think their college is the best. So there's a few... Um, suggestions that you might want to consider when you're choosing a college and um, the colleges on their websites have people that you can get in touch with and ask questions related to any of those as well. Um, if you have the opportunity to visit us on an open day that would be wonderful and you get a chance to um, potentially have a chance to look around. 
So how does the process work? So um, for those who apply for 2020 entry, and um, if you are applying for 2021 entry, you're essentially just changing this up a year. Um, the UCAS applications have to be in by the 15th of October. And over the past three years, we've had approximately 163 applications each year. Of those, approximately two people um, haven't sat the physics aptitude test. And with no mitigating circumstances, therefore they are no longer considered in the application process. So it's, it is vital when applying here that you register for the physics aptitude test, which you would take in November um, of the year. Um, so November 2020, if you're applying for 21 entry. Um, of those uh, approximately 160, about 120 of them were invited to interview in December. And um, they would have had two interviews, occasionally three interviews. Um, and then uh, the tutors would get together from all the colleges, discuss all the applicants and aim to offer places to the 50 applicants they considered would achieve, um, would, would be the best students to um, move forward on a material science degree at Oxford um, with the potential to do incredibly well. So um, at present there are 50 students holding offers to study material science starting in October 2020 and we hope that we are able to welcome all of those students in due course um, and that they achieve the grades um, that they have the potential to do. So that's how the process works. It is worth taking on board that when you are sent that offer, which is usually, the typical offer is usually A star AA, that we do not enter clearing and we do not enter adjustment. And it is really um, clear that you should, you know, work as hard as you can to achieve those grades. And, you know, um, it's sometimes the case that unfortunately students don't get those grades and therefore um, in many cases they no longer have a place on the course. So once you get the offer, work hard to achieve it and um, we'll see what happens then um, when you graduate. So um, the way our degree course works in the final year, you're um, essentially working on a research project and a lot of work and um, enjoyment goes into that final year and consequently we have about roughly a third of our students who go on to do um, research degrees after graduating. However, there is a wealth of uh, career options open to them and many of our um, graduates have gone on to these type of um, careers and others. So, um, for example, in this selection of uh, recent graduates, Brandon and Laura have stayed at Oxford to um, study research. Brandon, if I just look at this since I've got it correct, Brandon is looking at using artificial intelligent techniques such as machine learning to optimise qubit readouts for quantum computers. So really quite exciting and interesting project. And Laura, who's working in the Atom Probe Group, is looking at microstructural analysis of superconducting wires. So um, a technique, Ataprobe Tomography, a technique that was pioneered at Oxford. Um, so something that she's obviously very interested in. And we have other students that have gone on to do research degrees at other institutions. Um, Ellie in the top right corner is a materials technologist at Rolls-Royce. And um, if we start moving around in a kind of clockwise direction, Ellie um, entered the graduate scheme at Zodfoams. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, she worked in technical support and new product development. So um, again, a really exciting start to her career. Adrian um, has um, described himself in the past as a, a rocket scientist um, and he's working in space systems at Airbus and has been um, fortunate enough to be working um, with active roles on missions including ExoMars rover and a biomass satellite which was measuring global forest mass. So a range of ideas. Matthew, who um, graduated quite recently as well, um, has used, it's gone in a different direction using his kind of transferable skills of problem solving and communicative skills and is working as an analyst um, at a capital investments company. Katie 
is looking, um, she's an application specialist at Stable Microsystems, where they look at, um, well, they make, should I say, uh, texture um, analyzers, which can be used in the food industry, cosmetic industry, pharmaceuticals, and so forth. And Emily, who's there in the center, um, working at Arup, um, and recently I think she's uh, relocated with her company um, in a role in New York, which I think she, um, as far as I'm aware, is really enjoy. And within that um, area, she's on the materials team, and she's worked on atmospheric corrosion studies, and she's looked at um, additive manufacturing, and she's also worked on a number of sustainability-related projects. So a wealth of different careers, um, from um, a wealth of different happy um, graduate students. So lots of exciting things out there. And as far as I'm aware, at the moment, there are um, a, plenty of jobs for material scientists in the UK, but not as many well-qualified material scientists to fill those. So a growing, evolving subject that's highly sought after. So how can you find out more? You can look on our website, look on the Oxford University website and have a read of the University Prospectus and our website. You can look at our course brochure. We also have a reading list on there and we run a variety of events which you can find on our outreach pages. You can look on all the seven colleges websites and get an idea of what each of those are. And if you have any questions, you know, do not hesitate to contact us on the email address on this slide. And there's plenty of information for families also on the Oxford University website. So, you know, plenty for you to find out, but at the same time, if you can't find out the information you need, do not hesitate to get in touch. I wish you the best of luck, whatever you do in the future. Um, thank you very much for listening to me.